Dear students, let us continue our study in this paper entitled Drugs of Abuse. And in this particular module, we shall understand what are acidic drugs and then how they are analyzed. That is, we will be doing the understanding of analysis of acidic drugs. And before this module, you have been made familiar with what are the drugs, in what cases the drugs which can be otherwise used as medicines are the drugs of abuse, the various terminologies which have been associated with the drugs of abuse, the various types of drugs. Now you are already familiar like the psychoactive drugs where you have also the categories like the depressants, the stimulants, hallucinogens and then there are natural drugs and then there are designer drugs. So if we look for the term acidic drug, what do we really mean by that? So in this module, we shall try to know what are acidic drugs and then how they are analyzed in the forensic lab. After studying this module, you will be able to know what are acidic drugs and you shall be able to learn the extraction method of these acidic drugs by biological matrices and you shall be able to identify and analyze the different acidic drugs. So let us begin with knowing what are acidic drugs. As the name is telling you, it is something to deal with their acidic nature. As you are aware, the chemical compounds, because of the functional groups they possess, can be categorized as acidic, basic or neutral. So when we are talking about drugs, those drugs which have acidic functional group in them, that is they are acidic in nature, they are the acidic drug. So drugs, if we look for proper definition, that is what are acidic drugs, we can say drugs which are acidic in nature and they readily react with bases forming salts, they are known as acidic drugs. The main acidic drugs, if we talk about, they are barbiturates, which are substituted malonyl urea and salicylates, etc. And a few other compounds than the barbiturates like glutamide, meprobamate, etc. They are also in the category of acidic drugs. If we talk about barbiturates, barbiturates are the salts of barbituric acid. And these are the drugs that are associated with criminal poisoning cases which can be homicidal or suicidal. And in the Indian perspective, we can say this due to their easy availability. Thus, the search for barbiturate in biological materials is of quite importance in case of suspected poisoning by drugs. Now, let us try to understand how the extraction of barbiturates is done from biological matrices. They can be the solvent extraction method, that is we are taking the help of solvent to extract that organic compound which is barbiturate and then will be further using it. So what is done here is a system of two immiscible liquids will be required for the separation of material by solvent extraction. The active constituent should be unevenly soluble in the system thereby facilitating the extraction of the constituent from one phase to the other. So that is the preliminary requirement for carrying out the solvent extraction. The efficiency of the extraction is determined by the distribution coefficient abbreviated as D. And if you look at how this distribution coefficient can be mathematically expressed, it is expressed as total weight in grams of solute in the organic phase divided by total weight in grams of solute in the aqueous phase. If one of the two liquids contains a solute, this method is found more suitable. The system in this case is first shaken and then allowed to settle. 
sum of the solute is transferred to the other liquid. Each of the liquid in a mixture of two immiscible liquids of this kind is referred to a phase. Thus, sum of the solute is transferred from one phase to the other phase. The amount which is transferred, it will depend upon the relative affinity or the solubility of the solute in the, those two particular solvents that is called as the relative solubility and this is determined by the value of D. The greater the value of D, greater is the efficiency of extraction. The immiscible system may involve two organic solvents. The extraction of this system may be impaired due to formation of emulsion. Solvent extraction method has now been upgraded and it has been made automatic that is using the accelerated solvent extraction method. So what you can see is by using solvent extraction you take your compound that you have found at the scene for further investigation which may be this drug or which is present in the biological system. Then it is subjected to two phases which are solvent shaken and then out of these two this will be soluble more in one and this is repeated and that particular solvent is taken out and can be further evaporated and you can have the concentrated amount of that particular barbiturate. Coming to Stas Otto method, what is the detailed procedure? Let us try to understand. 50 grams of biological material is minced and mixed with plenty of rectified spirit in a flask and then it is acidified with tartaric acid. The mixture is then heated on the steam bath for 1 to 2 hours with thorough shaking at frequent intervals. The extraction is then allowed to proceed for about 24 hours with steam off. The mixture is then filtered by using filter paper and the filtrate is evaporated and the residue is again extracted with alcohol. All the filtrates are combined in a in one porcelain basin. To the final filtrate, you have to further add 2 ml of hydrochloric acid and then transfer to a separating funnel and extract with a suitable solvent like ether, chloroform, etc. in portions of about 25 ml. And this step is repeated for 2 to 3 times that is every time you will take 25 ml of ether and adding uh, after adding the 2 ml HCl and then this extract is taken out. So this step is repeated 2 to 3 times and the solvent would take up the barbiturates which were there in the biological material inside them and all the active constituents. The acid aqua solution is then used up for the further analysis of the barbiturates. There is another ammonium sulphate method and this particular method is most useful for preliminary analysis or the screening of barbiturates, alkaloids as well as tranquilizing drugs and also for identification and semi-quantization. The visceral materials about 100 grams are cut into pieces they are macerated and mixed with 100 ml of 5% acetic acid and taken into a 600 ml beaker. After this, solid ammonium sulphate is added to it by frequent shaking to make it a saturated solution. About 20 grams of solid ammonium chloride is then added in excess. The mixture is then heated in a boiling water bath for around 3 hours and if there is suspected poisoning by aconite, the temperature should not exceed 60 degree centigrade in this stage. After this, the mixture is cooled slightly and then filtered through the filter paper. The residue on the funnel is again extracted 
with two portions of 100 ml of 5% acetic acid and filtered as we have done just now. The filtrates are then combined and taken into a bigger 500 ml separating funnel and then solvent extraction is applied. How? The ether fraction is added to the aqueous acidic extract in the separating funnel and then shaken for 5 minutes and separated. 100 ml of ether is again added to the acidic layer and shaken for 5 minutes and then separated. All the ether layers so formed are collected. The acidic ether extract is then tested for the presence of salicylic acid, aspirin, barbiturates, meprobamates, lysergides, benzodiazepines, etc. The ether layer of acid ether fraction after washing with sodium bicarbonate is extracted twice with 25 ml portion of one normal sodium hydroxide solution. The aqueous layer are separated from ether layer, combined and taken into another separating funnel and this is made acidic with dilute sulfuric acid and extracted twice with 25 ml of ether portions each. This ether fraction is further washed with 25 ml of water and then dried by passing through anhydrous sodium sulphate which is a dehydrating agent and then evaporated to dryness. The residue fraction now contains barbiturates in relatively purified form. So you can see that after going through these repeated steps, different different steps, you can get the barbarate rates in the ether fraction and then further analysis can be done. Now let us try to understand how the analysis of barbarate rates is done which are obtained after such solvent extraction processes. Color tests are the preliminary tests in the general method of analysis of drug. The positive finding is a presumptive indication for any of the barbarate rates necessitating confirmed identification. However, these tests are very important. So first of all, let us consider the delay Copiani test which is done and here first of all, so let us look at the delay Copiani test and in this test, we have to first prepare some reagents. These are the cobalt acetate solution and isopropyl amine solution. The cobalt acetate solution is prepared by taking 1 gram of cobalt acetate which is there as tetrahydrate and it is dissolved in 0.2 ml of acetic acid. So this will be one solution. For preparing isopropyl amine solution, you can take 5 ml of isopropyl amine and mix it with 100 ml of methanol. So this is how you get the isopropyl amine solution. If you look at the procedure, a small amount of the extracted material which is suspected as barbiturate, it is placed on a spot plate and 3 to 4 drops of cobalt acetate solution followed by 3 to 4 drops of isopropyl amine solution you add. If there is an appearance of a purple or blue violet color, it will indicate the presence of barbiturate rates. So it is a very simple test. You have to simply take the extracted material which you suspect for barbiturate in a spot plate and add 3 to 4 drops of cobalt acetate solution as well as isopropyl amine solution and look for purple or violet color. There is another procedure for this. The residue of the extract of the sample can be taken in 1 ml of chloroform and to this portion of chloroform extract of the sample add 2 drops of freshly prepared 1% cobalt acetate in methanol and this is followed by adding 1% lithium hydroxide in methanol drop by drop. And in this case, a blue ring will be there at the juncture of the two liquids which will indicate the presence of the barbiturates. There is another test which is called as Dwecker's test. What is done in this test? The residue of the extract is taken in chloroform and to 1 ml of chloroform extract, 
2 to 3 drops of 0.5 ml of 5% pyridine in chloroform is added and then shaken. The color of chloroform layer becomes purple and then one drop of glacial acetic acid is added. If the color of chloroform layer changes from purple to faint or weak blue, the presence of non thio barbiturate will be indicated. So the result you can say there is a green color which changes to light green on adding the acetic acid. We can also carry out the identification of barbiturates by the technique thin layer chromatography. As you are already aware TLC is very very good technique where it can just compare any two sample one unknown with a known one and properly developing it with solvent system and spotting it with some spraying reagents which are appropriate which will give you color you can identify yes whether they are same or no. So what is done to identify barbiturates by TLC we take the TLC plate which is made with the help of silica gel G around 0.2 mm thickness. The developing technique is ascending and the solvent system you can take is any of these three. You can have ethyl acetate, methanol, ammonia in 25 is to 50 is to 25 ratio or you can have chloroform acetone in 80 is to 20 ratio or you can have isopropyl alcohol, chloroform and ammonia in 45 is to 10 ratio. And what are the spray reagents which will be used and the corresponding colors you will be detecting. So after these two solutions are prepared that is the diphenyl carbazone solution and the mercury chloride solution these two solutions are then mixed and this solutions which is so prepared after the mixing of A and B in equal volumes is used as the spraying reagent. So once you have developed the TLC after drying the solvent then you will spray this solution and the color of the spots that you are going to observe there will be blue violet spots which will be there on a pink background and this will be indicative the presence of barbiturates and as a matter of fact and you have to always put a standard known barbiturate sample and that that can give you very clear indication in terms of the RF as well as the color which is being observed. Another thing that you have to keep in mind while conducting this test is because the spraying reagent is containing the toxic mercuric salt this spraying should be done inside a fume chamber and you should try and you should not inhale this spraying reagent because it will be toxic to you. Another reagent which can be used for spraying is the Zwickers reagent and what is done here is 40 ml of 10 percent solution of copper sulphate is mixed with 10 ml of pyridine and this is then added to make up the volume to 100 ml and this resulting is called as the Zwickers reagent. And when this Zwicker reagent is used as a spraying reagent on the TLC that you have developed, pink spots will be observed in case of non thio barbiturates and green spots will be there in case of barbiturates. So you can even differentiate between the non thio barbiturates and barbiturates using this particular spraying reagent. Coming to another one is the mercurous nitrate. And what is done here is a saturated solution of mercurous nitrate containing a few drop of conch nitric acid is used as the spraying reagent and when you use this as the spraying reagent black spots are observed in case of barbiturates. And shown here in this table you can see that the various barbiturates which are there as the drugs of abuse they are listed here along with their RF values in the three solvent systems. The solvent system 1, 2 and 3 which we have discussed already. And if you recall the solvent system 1 is the ethyl acetate methanol ammonia system in 25 is to 50 is to 25 ratio. The 
solvent system 2 is chloroform and acetone in ratio of 80 is to 20 and the solvent system 3 is the isopropyl alcohol chloroform and ammonia in 45 is to 45 is to 10 ratio. So, what you can see here these are the corresponding RF values which will be reference for you and you can see that they can be differentiated with the RF values and combination with the color test you will be able to identify and another thing always keep in mind in TLC it is always you have a standard known sample. So, you can take these barbiturates one by one and wherever you are having all the parameters matching that is whether it is the RF value or it is the color of the spots with different different reagents if everything is matching and same they will be the same compounds. So, that always is a handy tool for you for doing the TLC. Now, coming to additional data on UV spectroscopy of barbiturates. All the barbiturates keep in mind they show absorption maxima at 240 nanometers in 0 0.05 molar borax buffer having pH around 10 which is prepared by dissolving 19.07 grams of borax in water and then diluting it to 1 liter or 1000 ml. Barbiturates in general other than the N substituted compounds they show absorption maxima at 255 mm in 2.5 normal sodium hydroxide solution. And the characteristic absorption in aqueous alkali you can see is 247 mm. Glutithimide in ethanol it is 252, 258 and 264 mm. Meprobamate shows no absorption in the rays of 230 to 360 mm. So, all these are the characteristics values which will help you identify that if you are conducting the UV spectroscopy of barbiturates and you have the UV spectra then first thing you take the known UV spectra also compare and then these reference values will be always of help to you. Furthermore, the thiobarbitrates they show absorption maxima at 290 nm and 239 nm in two normal sulfuric acid. Now, coming to the screening of barbitrates by IR spectroscopy. IR spectroscopy also you know is a very good technique and here what has to be done is the extracted purified material if it is to be subjected to IR spectroscopy it is done by using KBR disc. In case of biological materials there may be interference due to some extraneous material for example, they can be traces of fats or proteins in spite of the best efforts of you for purifying that material. So, the IR bands you have to keep in mind may be varied and complex, but yes some principal IR peaks of some barbitrates where the compounds like allobarbital, barbital, butobarbital, butabarbital, cyclobarbital, pentobarbital, phenobarbital and so on they are listed and the characteristic peak and again here if you have these pure sample IR spectra and then the suspected you can again do the comparison that whether it is the same. But you have to keep in mind that yes your sample may be not so pure so there will be variation in peaks. But yes it is all the combination it is the TLC with the color of the spots the spectra all that will be giving you the combined outcome that which particular barbiturate is there in that particular sample that you have collected. Now, coming to another acidic drug which are the salicylates. When we talk about salicylates then you will be examining the salicylic acid and salicylates in the biological materials and how that extraction has to be done. First of all let us understand the extraction of salicylic acid. 50 gram of the biological material or the viscera or 5 ml of serum or blood or 20 ml of urine is subjected to stas auto process for the solvent extraction that we have already studied. The acid ether extract will contain salicylic acid and this is taken and further analyzed. On the other hand if we talk about the extraction of salicylates 
50 gram of biological material which is Vyxtra or 5 ml of serum or blood or 20 ml of urine is subjected to extraction by taking warm absolute alcohol. The alcoholic solution is then filtered. The filtrate is dehydrated by anhydrous sodium sulfate which will act as the dehydrating agent and then it is evaporated to dryness. The residue so obtained is extracted with ether in lots of portions. The combined ether extract is then evaporated to dryness and the residue so obtained is kept reserved for different tests that we will be studying. So coming to the color test, first there is a McNally's test and how this test is conducted? To the residue of the extract of biological materials, a few drop of acetone and 1 to 2 ml of water are added. After that, 2 drops of 0.5% copper sulphate solution in 10% acetic acid is added followed by a pinch of solid sodium nitride. It is then shaken and heated gradually to boiling and then maintained in boiling conditions for a few minutes. And what will be the result that you have to look for? A red color if it is formed will be indicating the salicylate and the salicylic acid is present. Let us now look at the identification of salicylic acid and salicylate with the help of thin layer chromatography. And what are the conditions and the different uh, solvent systems you have to take? The plates have to be coated with silica gel GF254 of 0.2 mm thickness. The method used will be the ascending technique. The solvent system you can take glacial acetic acid is to benzene is to ether is to methanol in the ratio 9 is to 60 is to 30 is to 1. And once you have developed this plate, the visualization you have to do with the UV light. And what you will observe is the compound like aspirin which will have RF value of 50, salicylic acid will have 57, genistic acid will have 34 and you can always put a reference with these of the known aspirin or salicylic acid or genistic acid and just comparing those RF values and in under UV light they will be giving you the fluorescence and that is how you can detect these corresponding text and there will be a greenish fluorescence that they will be that corresponding spot you will be able to see and then you can measure the distance travel by the solute divided by the distance travel by the solvent and you can find out the RF values. So that is how you can do the color test or the TLC test for identifying the salicylates and salicylic acid. So dear students let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. In this module we studied what are acidic ducts and then how to analyze especially taking the case of barbiturates, salicylates and salicylic acid. We studied that acidic drugs are the drugs which are acidic in nature and they readily react with bases forming salts. We studied that barbiturates and salicylates are the very common example which come under the category of acidic drugs and we studied that for the extraction of acidic drugs from biological sample the solvent extraction technique using the ammonium sulfate method and the Stas auto method are very suitable and we have understood them in detail. After the extraction, the filtrate is then examined for various preliminary and confirmatory methods which are the various color tests by using different reagents that we have discussed. Then we also studied how the TLC technique can be used for identification and the use of UV and IR spectroscopy in their identification. 